Hey, today I'm talking about Ubiquity. We're gonna talk about their mesh products. Specifically, this one right here, it's the AC Mesh or ACM. It's the cheapest of the mesh products. Now, uh, it will mesh with one of these ceiling mount. This is the AP AC Pro. I always forget the names. This is the AC Mesh Pro. This is a giant 14 inch omnidirectional actually, but it's a panel and this will mesh with it. Now we're gonna unbox this and I'm gonna show you how to wirelessly connect this to one of these. Let's get this out of the box. All right, let's get this out. I think you're gonna be impressed with this little guy. It is really cool. So this is a two by two uh, Mimo. The, the other versions I show you are higher bandwidth and three by three, but this is way less expensive. You can find this on uh, Newegg, sometimes on sale for 75 bucks. Most of the time it is around $85, whether it's New Egg or Amazon. Now this is gonna help you set it up. Now there's the radio that comes in this eggshell. And I wanna show you, this is my second one. I am setting this up as a test. Let me get everything out and we'll get rid of the box. This is a test network. And that is it for the box. So let's dump that. Let's get the radio out. We have the rubber seal because this is also an outdoor radio. It will go indoors or out. Let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that. All right. This is the radio itself. It's got two antennas and I'm pretty sure that you can install external antennas on this, although I have not done so. I wanted to show you the size. This is a Pixel 3. XL. Look at the size of this thing. Sorry, my uh, cuticles are horrible. Look at the size of the Pixel 3 XL next to this radio. This thing is so small, very, very small. Now, take this right here, slide that off, and you will get to the port. It has a single PoE gigabit Ethernet port. This little indentation right here is where it will light up. It'll give you the ubiquity status if you've ever messed with these radios before. It gives you the color if it's associated, not associated, green, if everything's you know ready to go. So let's get out some of the op options here. This is the power over ethernet brick. This is a PoE. And you can see that the PoE this will be out and this will be the LAN in. Now you don't have to use uh, the network. Like I said, you can mesh this. It will talk wirelessly to another radio. It comes with the power adapter. This is nice because this is like a $20 option right here if you don't have it. Of course you can use your own PoE switch if you have it. I showed you this right here. This is also an outdoor radio, so yeah and get this back in. This will go into here, and this will seal up uh, from the elements if you need to do so. Now, mounting options. I've only used this in a non kind of pole mounted way, but you can use the screws, put this on a wall. My depth of perception is horrible today. So you can mount that to a wall, mount it like so, and it comes with a nice little bubble level on the bottom there. Now this is this is a little gizmo that I have not used but you can use to attach to other ubiquity antennas. And you can also use this as you see the little what we call a bite plate. This is plastic and not really uh, that industrial but you can also use this on the other side if you need to I think. Um, but more more often than not, you would just use the uh, a zip tie and come through, sorry, come through here with the zip tie and around the pole. I mean, this thing weighs next to nothing. This is, I mean, ubiquity, it is, they rock. Look at these little zip ties. They get their own branding on them right here on the foil. So that's nice that they include that. Of course, they give you uh, wall mount option screws and an extra 
Oh no, look at that, it's different. This has a split boot, and this one is a solid boot. So that, that's interesting that they would do that for you. The antennas, let's get those out. And what we're gonna do is I've got one of these in place already. I've got a ceiling mount and a flat panel already testing it and I'm going to show you in the config how to set this up as a mesh and not as uh, the land plugged into the bottom. So the antennas, you gotta take off the rubber boots. Make sure the washer stays on there. Give these a spin and then it is recommended that you put the antennas in a 45 degree angle from each other which can be like so and you are good to go. Everything you need is in this little booklet here but you do have to give this power and let it get on the network so you are going to have to power this plug it into your switch and come out and plug into the radio and let it get on your network go to your controller adopt it to the network and then you can tell it in the software to be a mesh radio wirelessly. Let's go do that now and we'll talk further about this. All right, I know I talked a little fast so maybe I thought I would show you real quick. I've got a LAN cable from my switch and that's gonna go into the LAN option right there. And then the PoE section right here switch port from the uh, PoE adapter goes into the antenna itself and we'll show you that. So give that a plug in and then this should start flashing. There it goes. So that's booting up. I just wanted to show you that. That is how you need to set it up first in order to get it on the network. Switch into the power supply PoE out to the radio. So let's go over to the workstation and see what this looks like prior to adoption. You can see here we've got pending adoption of a new MAC address. This will match the MAC address on the box of the access point that we just unboxed and fired up and we need to adopt this. So let's go ahead and click adopt. It will add it to our network. It will apply all of the settings that you have down here on uh, all the settings you have set up for site. Let's go ahead and start with some requirements that you're gonna need to do in order to get this to mesh. One of them, the big one is uplink connectivity monitor, enable connectivity monitor and wireless uplink. You need to do this, apply changes, and then that will apply, that will actually broadcast that setting to all of the access points in your network. Let's go back to devices. This is connected and I have a little, oh no, there it is, connected. So we are on it right here and I wanna go ahead and give it a name and config that. Let's call it access point four. Cause I am testing, I don't have these uh, set up in any rooms or anything, uh, anything special. So that's saved, but it's not okay. It just auto provisioned it and uh, didn't allow you to change any settings. We still have some things to do. Radios right here. This one was one that kind of uh, tricked me is you need to assign the radios manually. So I'm using uh, in the five gigahertz band uh, channel 40. If it goes into auto, it will sometimes use these DFS channels and that was messing with a couple of phones on my network so I just went ahead and auto 40 but to do this wireless uplink which requires 5 gigahertz you do need to do a specific channel I don't know if that's a bug or a new feature the other thing is when you go into 2 gigahertz you also need to apply it on 2 gigahertz as well now I'm don't quote me on that and you can leave a comment. I think that you have to do that. What I'm going to do is play with it and try to undo that later on. And this may ask me for antenna. No, it's not. Okay, so that's got a pending change right there. And what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to apply that. And then I'm going to close that and close that. So you can see here 
all of the devices right here. Notice that they're all on the same firmware. I went ahead and updated this access point four in order to get all my ducks in a row. But I was also troubleshooting a phone issue uh, connecting to this and I downgraded some firmwares, but I went ahead and uh, put them all on brand new firmware. So we adopted, we upgraded the firmware, we did the settings that we talked about, we went into the access point, we did config, we did the same radios, the radio channels, we named it so it's easily easy to find. And under wireless uplinks, we're going to click allow meshing to another access point. And we're going to apply that. It will provision it. Once it's done with this provision, we're going to go unplug it from the network and watch it disappear and come back as a wireless mesh. So it's still provisioning. That shouldn't take too long. And we're connected. I don't know what I was doing with that with the controller. Okay, going to unplug it now. So you see that it's now isolated. I've unplugged it from the network switch. So the only thing it's connected to is power and and we wait. There it is. Connected wireless. Now you can see which access point it has chosen. And it's done that because of the signal here at 94%. That's a, that's a pretty good uh, uplink there. But you could change it if you needed to force it to something else. That's it. If you have any questions, leave leave them down in the comments below. But also, you can check uh, Reset Forums and Reset.fm. Talk about this on a podcast and in the forums quite a bit. Thanks for watching.